Good morning, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I'm one of the pastors here at Douglas Avenue. Lead pastor, Reverend Meredith Brown, is on vacation getting some much needed rest um, and refreshment, and she will be back with us next week. I wanna welcome you to worship today, and if we have any visitors that have not tuned in to us before, you have a special warm welcome. We invite all of you to complete a contact card so we will know that you are here. Um, and if you have any special request or any special prayer request, please include that on your contact card. It is now the time in our worship that we generally pass the peace. Um, that is more difficult here in this time when we're all in our own homes. Um, so I'm gonna do something a little different today. As um, Jesus said to the disciples right after the resurrection, Jesus said, peace be with you. So I am gonna say, peace be with you, and then you repeat, and also with you. And if you have people in your home or listening with you, I encourage you to do that with them. So peace be with you, and also with you. So again, I say good morning and welcome to worship today. It is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. I'm here in my office and we are worshiping Christ together, wherever you are, in your home, in your apartment, in your car, whatever, we are together um, to worship God. Hello, my name is Malia and this is our Wouldn't It Be Lovely team. We are so grateful that you allow us to be in this church and the last few months has been really miserable, but you allowed us to come back in, and this is our support, and we're so happy here and grateful, thankful, and you are amazing. Now, we are going to do our call to worship. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. The promises of God will never be broken. With God as our light, what is there to fear? The promises of God will never be broken. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The promises of God will never be broken. Thank you so much, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and we love you! <laughs> Please join us in singing Good, Good Father. you 
It's who I am. It's who I am. Good morning, everybody. I need all kids to come up around your TVs. Um, we're going to be moving to a different location today because we have kind of a little thing going on at our house right now. We're getting a new roof and have been, and so it's really loud and distracting. So we're gonna go on location. And while we do that, come up to your TVs and get comfy for children's moments coming up really soon. See you in just a minute. Good morning, everybody. And we're back and thank you while you waited for us to get to our new location. We are actually at Donkey's house today, but Donkey is not here. Um, he's taking a little vacay, but we are at Donkey's house, so shh. But anyway, I am Miss Lori, and I am the director of Children and Youth Ministries here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and this is Cohen, who is my assistant, and we have Laud. Laud the lamb. Now, Laud appears to be dressed as King George from the movie Hamilton. And I'm even wearing a Hamilton shirt today. And I'm sure you're thinking, what does all of this have to do with church and God? Right, Laud? I know, King George is your favorite, which is a little bit disturbing, but okay. Anyway, we all, this week, you were talking in a, um, Adventure Camp about dreaming big and aiming high, right? Aiming high. And that got me to thinking, as we dream big and aim high, God's given us all special gifts. Not like a present, sorry. Not like a present, but a gift, a talent that is inside of us. We each have a gift. Not everybody's gift is the same. And I was thinking about that as we were had the good fortune to be able to watch Hamilton on TV this week. And I was thinking about Lin-Manuel Miranda, who wrote it, produced it. And I thought, wow, talking about aiming high and dreaming big. He wrote a musical about Alexander Hamilton, not a particularly known founding father. We all know him now very well, and our kids do too. But that's an example of somebody who was dreaming big and aiming high and using their gifts. And those gifts have helped us during this pandemic, right? So some of our gifts might be singing, Laud is a fabulous singer. See, hear that? It's beautiful. That's not my gift. Some people have the gift in school and they're really, really smart. Some people are very artistic. We all have different gifts. So this week, I would like you to think about your special God-given gifts because you have one. He's given it to you. You have to figure out what it is though and then use it. So, King Laud here and I would like to wish you a very happy and pleasant Sunday. And remember, shh, don't tell Donkey we were here. He'll never know. Anyway, you dropped your crown. I know. So, it is time now to hear our Adventure Explorers song, I've Got the Joy. Have a great Sunday, guys. See you later. Hi, Adventure Explorers. It's time to do our song one more time. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Here we go. I've, I've got, got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy. Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus
Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Great job, Adventure Explorers. We'll see you next week. Hi, my name is Brooke and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church along with my son Caspian. I am also um, an employee of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and I work in the sewing room. So our first reading is from the Bible is from Acts, Acts 2, 14 through 18. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through with the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Our second reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Look, at, look your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Thank you, Brooke, for reading our scripture today. And again, if you are signing on late, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am here to bring the word of God to you today. The first scripture that Brooke read was the very first Pentecost, and Apostle Peter let the whole church knowing that God's Spirit was pouring out, that the energy for the church and all the love and all these people would begin following Jesus. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. We learn that Jesus' people will speak messages all over the land, and they will see visions, and they will dream dreams. Those of you following the Adventure Explorer worship on Wednesday evening, we're encouraged to think big in your life, to have visions and dreams, to celebrate God's goodness. I was to preach on dreaming big and how wonderful that is in our world today. But as I thought about my dreams, my personal dreams, I was forced to name that often it is fear that keeps me from dreaming too big. You see, I'm often 
too afraid to reach too big for my dreams. I often have fears that affect the way I live out my daily life. For example, I fear that coronavirus is gonna somehow change the future of the church. Even though such wonderful things have happened as we have connected together in new ways, I still fear what is the future? And I don't have an answer. I fear that if we don't be, if we're not able to get together in a community, I fear the future of wouldn't it be lovely in its financial situation. Currently, we are doing just fine, but I'm always fearing the future that keeps me from reaching for the stars at times. I want to have a wouldn't it be lovely house that our homeless women will have a safe and secure place to live. And as I begin dreaming about that, it's often fear that holds me back. And I wonder about the logistics. I wonder about the liability. I wonder about the financial and fear sometimes keeps me from going forward. There are days that I fear that those that I love will get sick, maybe with the virus, or I won't be able to care for my father the way that I know that I want to and I should. I'm afraid some days of America, we have become so divisive and that frightens me. We have become a land of exclusion and not inclusion. We're making great strides, but there's so much division and that scares me. I'm afraid of the negative energy that the future election might mean for our country. I'm afraid sometimes of my children making a mistake that that mistake could affect the whole life and have implications for a long time. I'm afraid right now of the schools, how will they open and how will they do it and will it be safe? And I worry about the teachers and I'm fearful for how they'll keep everything together. And if that's not enough fears, I read this poll about what Americans are afraid of. And I just want to list a little, a few of those. And this was pre COVID. They're afraid of political process. They're afraid of medical bills, not having enough money, another world war, global warming, terrorist attacks, identity theft. That scares me too. Um, snakes and spiders made the list. People that we love dying. I think we all fear that. Nuclear weapons. Public speaking was one of the top 10 fears, fear of dying, fear of heights, enclosed spaces, and lastly on the top 10 list was fear of needles. But I know my role here is not to tell you and bring you down and tell you all these things that there are to be fearful of. My goal here is to give us hope in the midst of these fears and just be a human voice for all of us. I don't think that I'm that unusual when I talk about fear. I'm going to do that, so I'm going to ask you to hang on, but please pray with me. Oh, loving and gracious God, as we come here today and talk about the beauty of dreaming big in this wonderful world you've created, it's often fears that keep us from moving forward. I pray that you will be with me as I preach this sermon, as it is awkward to preach to an iPhone in an office. God, I just ask that your spirit fills me and the words that I have prepared changes the hearts and minds of just one person, at least, listening today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The words fear not or be not afraid occur in scripture over 100 times. Jesus tells us that we do not have to fear, but I don't think for a minute that those fears that we have like mine or the ones that I listed in the poll make us less faithful or less Christian. It just makes us human. Maybe God always says fear not, not to make us feel bad for our worrying, but to invite us to lift up our hearts in the presence of each moment, because this life is a gift. Each moment is a gift. And this gift originates in the goodness of the gift giver, our God. Not in the worthiness or the fearlessness of the gift receiver, meaning us, all of us. I believe that it is so true, but I needed another scripture to help me express it and explain it to you better. The second scripture that Brooke read was from the Gospel of Luke, the 13th chapter. The context of this scripture, we find Jesus making his way to Jerusalem, teaching about the kingdom of God, healing people, doing miracles. Um, he passes through villages and towns. 
While some chose to follow him, not all welcomed him. Cold and calculating responses to Jesus' presence intensify as Jesus goes closer to Jerusalem. In fact, verse 31 opens with this very serious warning. A group of Pharisees came to Jesus and urged him to leave the city, telling him that Herod's going to kill him. This is not an idle threat. As we know, Herod is a powerful political figure who has already shown his true colors for violence in the beheading of John the Baptist, who was Jesus' cousin. Herod has heard the reports about Jesus' miracles and about all the followers he's getting, and he's been looking for an opportunity to see Jesus for himself. According to this group of Pharisees, Herod's curiosity has turned dangerous. Luke's account of the events gives no information to us just why these Pharisees would warn him. In general, the Pharisees were not friends of Jesus. Instead, the focus is not on Jesus' response to Herod, rather to heed the warning and make preparations to flee. As I think about it, wouldn't each of us do that? We would figure out a way to flee. So when the Pharisees came to Jesus and told Jesus he should leave town, that Jesus, that Herod was after him, Jesus was the embodiment of be not afraid. He was like, oh, Herod wants to kill me. Well, tell that fox that I have work to do. He basically said to the same guy who beheaded, beheaded his cousin, oh, sorry, but I'm just not afraid of you. Jesus, the guy who again and again says, be not afraid, shows us here exactly what it looks like to be unafraid. In a devotion that I read earlier at the beginning of the coronavirus by Natalie Boltz Weber, she said exactly what it is I'm feeling. She said that Jesus was brave, and I think we all agree to that, but just knowing that Jesus is brave doesn't really take away our fear, not really. So maybe our hope for becoming unafraid is found in the rest of this story, the part where Jesus called Herod a fox and refers to himself as a mother hen. A mother hen. Jesus calls himself a hen and the murderous Herod a fox. A fox is sly and mean and quick, so I can see kind of why Jesus used a fox to represent Herod. But why did Jesus use himself as a hen? I keep asking, at least, Jesus, why didn't you call yourself a rooster? A rooster has um, wings that he could surround someone, and a rooster has sharp um, back feet where he could protect himself, and a rooster has a really sharp beak. But Jesus likened himself to a hen whose chief purpose was to protect his babies, not with sharp feet and beaks, but with nothing but feathers as she flopped up her um, wings and circled around her chicks. She also put herself between the fox, which was the danger, and the chicks, as ill-equipped as a hen would be to a fox. That is our Jesus. Maybe the beautiful image of God as a hen or with his chicks could mean something important for us today. And by us, I mean us vulnerable human beings that I know all have fear. We face fear regularly, no matter how we try to frame it. I cannot tell you that the mother hen thing means that God will protect us from Herod or that God's to keep bad things from happening to us. A mother hen cannot actually keep a determined fox from killing her chicks. So then where does that leave us? I mean, if danger is real and a hen can't actually keep their chicks out of danger, then what good is the image of God as a mother hen if faith can't make us safe? As Web Weber stated, maybe it's not safety that keeps us from being afraid. Maybe it is love, which means that a mother hen of God doesn't keep foxes from being dangerous, a mother hen of God keeps foxes from being what determines how we experience the unbelievable, beautiful gift of being alive. God, the mother hen, gathers all of her downy feathers. I can just see it. Vulnerable little ones under God's protective wings so that we know that we belong because it's there that we find warmth and shelter. 
Faith in God does not bring us safety. There still is danger. The fox still exists. Danger still exists. And by that, I mean danger is really not optional. We still have viruses and cancer, shaky economy, big world conflicts, and so on. Danger is not optional, but fear is. Because maybe the opposite of fear is not being brave, as I used to think. Maybe the opposite of fear is love. The writer of First John tells us that perfect love cast out fear. Did you hear that? Perfect love cast out fear. So in the response to our own Herods, our own fears in our world, in the response to the very real dangers that we each have, we have an invitation as people of faith, which is to respond to that fear by loving. I'm slowly learning that fear does nothing to keep bad things from happening. It might move us into action, so it's not all bad, but it also steals the joy of appreciating the good things among us, and it keeps us from reaching those big dreams that we might have. So I suggest that we love the world and we keep on dreaming big and let that love overpower that fear at times. We love the world by keeping our church open, so wouldn't it be lovely and compass and our food pantry can continue. We love the world and we wrap our arms around it by sharing our money and our time and our talents with people in need. We love the world by being a voice against racism, as hard and uncomfortable and unprepared at times we are for that. There is a call and a need for us to do that now. And that is how we love the world. We love the world by riding a bike and raising over $35,000 for um, an orphanage in Haiti. We love the world by calling each other and writing notes and being each other's support during this time. We love the world um, by bringing food to the Wouldn't It Be Lovely Women. We've had women do that, bringing lunches. We love the world by telling those in need that they are being prayed for, and then we pray for them. We love the world by voting. We love the world by wearing face masks. Danger is dangerous, that's nothing new, but God's love and our love for each other defines us, not our fears. In life, the goal is to grow from chicks to chickens. And by sharing what we have received, by sharing what we have learned with others, and by loving the way that we have been loved, by a mother hen, by our God, who wraps us with those big feathers, who gave life to us and gathered us under his wings. Don't let fear win as I have at times. Keep pushing on. Do not let fear win. Keep dreaming, remembering that God is wrapping each and every one of us with love in the face of our fears. And let that love help break some of that fear as we all reach for our dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, amen. Our assignment DAUMC this week was to send in pictures from Adventure Camp of the Rainbow Blowers, or you had an option of sending a picture of something that gives you strength, something that helps you reach for your dreams, something that helps you conquer your fears. So I invite you now to sit back and watch our assignment DAUMC to the music, I'll Fly Away.
few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. It is now the time in our church service where we go to God in prayer. Before we do that, I do want to remind you how important our church believes prayer is, praying for and with each other. So if you have a prayer request, I encourage you to put that in the comments sections on the Facebook Live or to email it to the church or to myself or to Pastor Reverend Meredith Brown. We will hold those prayers in confidence and we will pray for whatever needs you have. Um, so we come now to a time that we um, put everything else out of our minds, um, take a deep breath and bow your heads, and we go to God in prayer. O oh, loving and gracious God, to the God that wraps us up and protects us like a baby chick, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your goodness, for the love that you show us, um, that you demonstrate to us through scripture and for the love that we feel each and every day. We pray, O oh God, that you help each of us look for ways that we can reach for the stars, how we can dream big, and that we do not let fear keep us back, that we are reminded that the opposite of fear is your love, and that love can propel us to do big and beautiful things. O oh God, we have many prayers as a church family. We continue to grieve the loss of just not being together. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to keep us strong, that you keep us all safe, and that we are reminded each day how important our church family is, even when we are not together. O oh God, we pray for the many ministries of our church. We pray for Wouldn't It Be Lovely and their big fundraiser that they're having on Friday night. We pray, O oh God, for the Compass Summer Program for the children that are learning via Zoom. We pray, O oh God, for our food pantry. We pray for all the many ministries that many of us are involved in throughout the community. Be with our community as these times are difficult for so many. Be with the women of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? O oh God, we have many other concerns. Those that are in poor health, may it be because of the coronavirus or for whatever reason, God, we ask you to surround them and draw near to them. We ask that you also be with those that are grieving, grieving the loss of normal activities or grieving the loss of somebody or someone that they love dearly. Hold them in the palm of your hand, O oh God, and be with them. O oh God, we pray for all of us, that each and every person has our own fears to um, that we have to deal with. We have things that scare us, but let us lean into you and believe and trust in your love to help us through. We pray, oh God, for our denomination as it looks forward to an annual conference that'll be different. We pray for our district superintendent, Reverend Watkins, who will be with us next week to pr preach for us. We pray, oh God, for our bishop as he makes difficult decisions about keeping us safe in worship. Oh God, we pray for our world and our world leaders. We pray that your spirit will rain down and the division that we feel can somehow be softened. Soften each of our hearts. Help each of us as we move into this world and this community in these scary days and trust each other's hearts. Oh God, we come to you now in a time of silence where we bring to you each of our prayers. And now, O oh God, is the time that we usually say together the Lord's Prayer, but today we will sit and listen as Marcia sings for us the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory It is now the time in our worship service where we have the opportunity to give, to show our generosity for God's goodness and for the church and for the ministries um, that we conduct. Um, if you have any questions how you can give, it can be done online. Feel free to call the church office to get directions from Carol how you can make your generous donation if that is your choice. I have the benefit right now to introduce to you someone that is going to explain to you how she has found hope in these times, how she gives her own time and talents to the Lord. So I welcome you, um, Connie Sims. Hi, my name is Connie Sims and I am currently a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. I also have been for the last three years the co-chair of our famous garage sale. Unfortunately, this year, we were disappointed that we had to cancel it due to the coronavirus. Um, we really regret this decision, but we think it was really taken out of our hands. And we uh, hope to resume next year. Uh, most of all, I miss working with the other volunteers um, during that time. I've also volunteered for the past couple of years as a docent for the Elijah Isles House. We've also had to close that site this summer because we rely strictly on volunteers and it was just too risky for those people. Um, I have filled my empty time by doing a lot of yard work and I've really enjoyed being outdoors in the sunshine, the fresh air, and watching things that I plant grow. I have also been able to volunteer with Wouldn't It Be Lovely to help deliver some of the new products that they've developed this year. Um, I um, really support our Wouldn't It Be Lovely mission and um, am glad that it's been able to continue strongly this summer. Um, I've enjoyed the Women with Power Coffee Hour Bible study that we've been doing, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Please stand and join us in our final hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Everything to God in prayer. 
For joining in worship today and in closing I just want to say I'm going to ask you all to ask yourself how are you wrapping your arms around those in need how are you living out your faith in the world um, so ponder on that a little bit and as we leave this place I want you to go into the world and love God more and serve your neighbor go in peace <music>